You may have heard of the chakras before, a system of energy centers throughout the body that when activated, allow a person to feel more emotionally balanced, mentally clear, and spiritually in tune. Chakra healing is a common practice in several world religions, as well as more modern spiritual belief systems. But is there any scientific proof that chakras really exist? Hey lunatics, it's Lady Luna, and today we're taking a deep dive into the scientific evidence for chakras and why it's pretty clear, at least to me, that they do really exist. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lady Luna and I love making videos on all sorts of mystical, magical, and spiritual topics, so be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. For those unfamiliar with chakras, the Oxford Language Dictionary defines the word chakras as an in Indian thought each of the centers of spiritual power in the human body, usually considered to be seven in number. It's true that there are believed to be many chakras or energy centers throughout the body. Some would say there are even over 100 chakras, but typically the chakras are known to most people as a system of seven energy centers that align along the human spine and up into the head, each with their own color, meaning, and function. The word chakra comes from the Sanskrit word kakra, which means wheel. This is because chakras are often thought of as spinning wheels of energy around certain parts, organs, and glands in the body. Here is a basic representation of all seven chakras, their corresponding colors, and the meaning attached to each one. Starting from the bottom up, the red root chakra represents security and grounding. The orange sacral chakra represents creation and sensuality. The solar plexus chakra represents confidence and willpower. The green heart chakra represents love and compassion. The blue throat chakra represents communication and self-expression. The indigo third eye chakra represents mental clarity and seeing past illusions. And the purple or sometimes white crown chakra represents spirituality and oneness with all. While it's true that there are no literal colored wheels spinning in or around the body, this serves as a symbolic representation of something real that does exist. The seven chakras are said to be connected to certain glands in the body, as you can see by this graphic. In fact, believe it or not, the seven chakra system matches up very well with the human endocrine system. This is a system in our body that is made up of glands that are responsible for producing various hormones. According to EPA.gov, endocrine systems, also referred to as hormone systems, are found in all mammals, birds, fish, and many other types of living organisms. They are made up of glands located throughout the body, hormones that are made by the glands and released into the bloodstream or the fluid surrounding cells, and receptors in various organs and tissues that recognize and respond to the hormones. These are the organs that make up the endocrine system. These glands and organs produce extremely important hormones that we all need in order to function. But what is it exactly that hormones do? According to grassrootstelsa.com, many factors can influence your mood from changing weather to your own internal systems. Controlled by a structure in your brain called the hypothalamus, your hormones make a big difference in your emotional state, causing both good and bad mood patterns. Regulating your hormones can significantly improve and balance your emotional health and resolve mood disorders. When we observe each of the organs and glands of the endocrine system, we can see how well they match up with the seven chakras. For reference, I'm using the information from hopkinsmedicine.org to explain the functions of each gland in the endocrine system. Starting from the top downward, the crown chakra is connected to the pituitary gland, which controls the functions of all other endocrine glands. The third eye chakra is connected to the pineal body or pineal gland and the hypothalamus. The pineal gland secretes melatonin for us to sleep and helps us dream. The hypothalamus secretes hormones that stimulate or suppress the release of hormones in the pituitary gland, in addition to controlling water balance, sleep, temperature, appetite, and blood pressure. The throat chakra is connected to the thyroid and parathyroid glands. 
The thyroid helps regulate the body's metabolism, while the parathyroid helps regulate the body's calcium balance. The heart chakra is connected to the thymus in the upper part of the chest. The thymus produces white blood cells that fight infections and destroy abnormal cells. The solar plexus chakra is connected to the adrenal gland and the pancreas. The adrenal glands are located on top of each kidney. They make and release corticosteroid hormones and epinephrine that maintain blood pressure and regulate metabolism. The pancreas plays a role in digestion and produces insulin and glucagon, which regulate levels of blood sugar. The sacral chakra glands will differ depending on if you're male or female. For women, the sacral chakra is connected with the ovaries, and if pregnant, also the placenta. The ovaries contain egg cells necessary for reproduction. The ovaries also produce estrogen and progesterone. For men, the sacral chakra is connected to the testes, which produce testosterone and sperm. There are actually differing opinions on which organs count for each chakra. Some people believe the pancreas actually matches up with the sacral chakra, and the ovaries and testes match up with the root chakra. However, the root chakra is most often considered to be its own thing, usually associated with the anus, which is not part of the endocrine system. This would actually make sense, since the sacral chakra is connected with sensual and reproductive energy, so the ovaries and testes fit in with that better than the pancreas would. The pancreas fits with the energy and vigor associated with the solar plexus chakra. Even though the root chakra, or the anus, is not part of the endocrine system, its presence as one of the seven chakras does make a lot of sense. Believe it or not, according to Ranker.com, all human beings start out as tiny anuses in the first few weeks after fertilization. You're nothing more than a small group of cells called a blastula. This blastula bursts open from inside out, making a little itty bitty opening. This opening is called a blast pore, and it's the first of your proto-organs to begin forming. While that may sound like a pretty fancy word, the blastopore is actually just a minuscule anus. The rest of your body develops from there. So essentially, we all bloom from our root chakra when we start to form in the womb, which I find fascinating. The endocrine system isn't the only scientific evidence we have that points toward the reality of the chakra system. There was a study done in December of 2013 called Bodily Maps of Emotions. According to the abstract of this study, in five experiments, participants were shown two silhouettes of bodies alongside emotional words, stories, movies, or facial expressions. They were asked to color the bodily regions whose activity they felt increasing or decreasing while viewing each stimulus. Different emotions were consistently associated with statistically separable body sensation maps across experiments. The researchers then created graphics of the mapped emotions according to the patterns demonstrated by the participants. Here we can see these graphics and how each emotion we have tends to show up in a different part or parts of the body. As I mentioned earlier, each chakra is attached to different emotions, so it would make sense why different parts become more or less activated with certain positive or negative feelings we experience. I think the most telling examples on this graphic are those of depression, which would indicate all chakras are blocked, and love, which would indicate all chakras are open and activated. One key factor in helping the chakras to remain open is keeping the spine straight while standing or sitting. This would make sense since it's medically proven that there have been numerous health benefits to maintaining good posture. According to Healthline.com, such benefits of good posture include reduced back pain, fewer headaches, increased energy, less tension in your shoulders and neck, decreased risk of wear and tear on joints, reduced joint pain, increased lung capacity, improved circulation, improved digestion, improved core and scapular strength, having better form during workouts, and increased self-confidence. I would bet that after hearing that list of benefits, a lot of you may be sitting up straighter now, aren't you? Be sure to comment below if you are. So, when we align our chakras by straightening our spine, it truly does help the systems of our body work more efficiently. But what about the colors of each chakra? 
Is there scientific evidence to explain the significance of those? Psychologically speaking, there are many ways that different colors affect our mood, in ways more powerful than we know. The seven chakras match with the seven main colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. When we think of or look at different colors, it's no secret that very specific emotions come to mind. For example, red is associated with passion, lust, anger, and fear, all the most intense and primal of emotions. Orange is associated with creativity, enthusiasm, rejuvenation, energy, and stimulation. Sometimes orange is associated with alertness or caution. Yellow is associated with optimism and joy, but it can also be associated with hunger, cowardice, or sickliness. Green is associated with relaxation, restfulness, earthiness, and stability. It's also sometimes associated with money or envy. Blue is associated with calmness, tranquility, peace, and clarity. Sometimes blue is also associated with sadness, loneliness, and feelings of suffocation. Indigo, one of the lesser talked about colors of the rainbow, is a combination of blue and purple or violet. It is associated with enlightenment, deeper understanding, awareness, and consciousness. Violet is associated with feelings of mystery, mysticism, magic, curiosity, and even royalty. When we understand how each color makes us feel on a psychological level, it's no wonder that colors like yellow, which make us feel hungry, are associated with the solar plexus chakra in our abdomen, or that indigo, which makes us more conscious and aware, would be associated with the third eye in the brain, etc. In fact, the colors of the foods we eat can help us to open and activate our chakras. Eating whole foods, such as fresh fruits and vegetables that match the same colors as different chakras, can actually have major benefits to our health as well. Whole, unprocessed foods that come in a variety of rainbow colors all contain phytonutrients, which help protect us from chronic diseases. According to health.harvard.edu, here is a full list of all the health benefits we can get from eating foods in each of the different colors. Feel free to pause the video and read the list if you like because there are a lot of benefits and also specific food suggestions under each color. The seven chakras not only align with the seven colors of the rainbow, they also align with different sound frequencies. In fact, all seven colors of the rainbow match up in frequency with each of the seven notes in a musical scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. When we play or listen to music, it can help us not only align our chakras, but also improve our overall mood. There are even sound bowls, also known as singing bowls, that come in sets of all seven musical notes in order to specifically target each of the chakras when you ring them. Chakras tend to get blocked by negative emotions, such as stress, sadness, worry, and anger. However, there are things we can do to unblock them. These are things a person would normally do for lessening all types of stress in general. Some examples of things that will open your chakras include meditation, yoga, listening to positive music, getting regular exercise, getting enough sleep, keeping yourself hydrated, journaling, doing self-reiki or energy work, and learning to establish healthy boundaries with others. Some other things that help us open the chakras are holding and wearing crystals that match the color of the chakra you'd like to open, diffusing essential oils that help you calm and balance your emotions, and meditating with candles in the color that match the chakra you'd like to open. In fact, I actually designed a line of my own chakra candles in different colors that each come with their own individual affirmation and mantra to help you in your chakra healing journey. So check out the link to those below this video. I also have several pieces of chakra jewelry, temporary tattoos, and other spiritual tools and accessories you might like, so feel free to check those out. If you made it this far in the video, be sure to comment the secret word of the day, which is energy. Thanks for watching, guys, and be sure to subscribe and click back soon for more videos like this. Bye!